Hi everyone, welcome to Access Prescriptor. I feel personally this is most awaited video in our physiotherapy field because when the patient complains of pain, always you are all thinking that shall I prescribe any movement or exercise or should I go with any passive option. This question always run behind our mind. How can we prescribe exercise first? So when it comes to that, the exercise intensity always plays crucial role, right? Because the exercise intensity increases, the patient pain also increases. As the exercise intensity decreases, patient pain also decreases. So most of the patient come with the complaints of pain during load. For example, I stair climb, I have pain. Number of stair climb increases the pain. Most of the patient comes to us, the load is directly proportional to their pain. As they load their body, they will get the pain. So considering this point of view, how can we prescribe the exercise even the person has pain? That is why we are going to discuss. For a simple point of view, we can prescribe the exercise. For example, exercise intensity is indirectly proportional to the person's pain intensity. On that note, how can we particularly prescribe the exercise intensity? To prescribe the exercise during pain, with the common sense we can see, the person can able to do that exercise. For example, during exercise, the person's pain is increasing. The person can't able to perform that exercise, so we have to regress the exercise intensity. If the person can able to perform, pain is not increased, we have to progress the exercise intensity. This is the major point of view of discussion today. Can perform or can't perform? If the person can able to perform, progress the exercise intensity. If the person can't able to perform, regress the exercise intensity. Next, we are going to see eight key factors that determines the exercise intensity. Come on, let's get dive into the video. The first one is load. Obviously, right? As the load increase, exercise intensity will be higher. Load decrease, exercise intensity will be lesser. For example, considering the person A performing body weight squat, person B performing 10 kg folded squat, which is tougher, obviously, the person who performing with weights. So, exercise intensity determined by load which you apply to the person. Load can be varied highly by the gravitational force body weight and it can be a barbell, it can be a dumbbell, it can be a loop band, anything it can be. Any resistive force which is applied to the movement particularly. That considered to be a resistive force. So another point which we have to add here is repetition the person is going to perform. This is indirectly proportional to the load which is applied. For example, higher the load during the movement, lesser the repetition we can accept because load is going higher and higher, quick neural fatigue or muscular fatigue we can see to the person. If the load is lesser, the person can able to perform more of the repetition. Like previous example, the person A performing body weight squat, person B performing 10 kg squat, both of their training experience, physical fitness same. So whom can perform more repetition? Obviously the body weight person can perform more repetition compared to this person. So considering this factor, intensity of the exercise, load which you apply and repetition which you are giving plays major role in the exercise prescription. Second key factor in prescribing the exercise intensity is moment arm. Moment arm is nothing but, for example, you are performing lateral raise. Consider you are performing lateral raise, the distance between the shoulder attachment to the weight, the R, it's called moment arm. This is going to develop the torque. If the moment arm is higher, torque production of the shoulder will be more. The moment arm is lesser, torque production of the particular giant exercise which you are performing is lesser. So moment arm is the key factor determining the intensity. So moment arm can be two things, effort arm and resistance arm that will be a deep science. So already we uploaded the detailed video in biomechanics. So click here to learn more about the moment arm. And also mainly moment arm concepts we can apply in clinical practice by giving the resistance to the patient. For example, I am giving side lying external rotation exercise. So applying the resistive force to the wrist joint and just below the wrist also changes the muscular activation force manually. And another point in clinical application, during shoulder strength testing, when you apply the force during the wrist region and elbow region, makes higher the difference in the load application to the particular joint through momentum changes. So, by in clinical practice or uh, giving exercise, reducing the momentum, we can decrease the exercise intensity. Increasing the momentum, we can progress the exercise intensity. Third factor in exercise prescription is range of motion. It's one of the beautiful factor to understand. Again, take the same example. One person performing half squat, another person performing full squat. What do you think? Which person have higher the load? Definitely, the person who performing the higher the range of motion. So, higher the range of motion, higher the muscle expected to work. So as the range of motion is more, the person exercise intensity is higher. Range of motion is lesser, person exercise intensity is lesser. So range of motion also one of the crucial factor to determine the exercise intensity. The fourth component is 
types of muscle contraction types of muscle contraction means when it comes to isometric concentric eccentric so consider these three types of muscle contraction is there isometric is comparatively easier than the concentric concentric is comparatively easier than the eccentric so eccentric produces more of muscle damage it requires a lot of range of motion and control to the movement so you can give eccentric exercise the person who master the exercise there is no pain at the end stage we can give the isometric exercise there is no movement occur for example you can hold and perform even the isometric exercise how much force you apply it's matter each type of muscle contraction have a lot of the level of progression and regression when you starting the exercise so start with isometric and progress to concentric and progress to eccentric is the better progression in the rehab course fifth one is bilateral versus unilateral if the exercise is performed bilateral like the person performing bilateral squat another person performing unilateral squat like single leg squat which is more tougher obviously the single leg squat because whole body weight carried by the single leg here whole body weight carried by the double leg as soon as you shift the exercise into unilateral rotational stability and balance comes into play to make the movement is more tougher and challenging so the progressing the exercise into bilateral to unilateral also makes the exercise intensity progression in your rehab phase so it is not like from bilateral to immediately how to switch to unilateral there is a lot of progression criteria adjusting your feet distance and height and so many factors plays major role to prescribe the exercise intensity sixth one again isolated movement versus compound movement for example you are treating the knee pain targeting the quadriceps isolatedly through leg extension leg curl and then progress to the squats and deadlifts like this kind of hip thrust kind of compound movement it's nothing but single joint exercise to multi joint exercise open kinetic chain exercise to close kinetic chain exercise for example performing close kinetic chain exercise need a multi joint muscle work more of the muscle activation so the exercise intensity will be higher unilateral exercises performing single joint movement isolated targeted approach the exercise intensity will be lesser through these exercises also how much load you are applying as i mentioned in the previous point also can take into the consideration seventh point is rest period rest period also plays crucial role in determining the exercise intensity for example in rehab phase i am talking when conditioning phase and athletic training sport specific phase rest period have a proper role in hypertrophy training strength training and power training we're not going to talk about that we talk about the rehabilitation aspect higher the rest period better the performance in second and third set from the patient so i always prefer in clinical practice we can't take 2 3 minutes rest after activating one muscle after giving one movement so i will multiply the movement for mobility exercise along with one activation exercise in between there will be enough rest period for that exercise movement to perform better so this i used to follow frequently so rest period also plays huge role in determining the exercise intensity so eighth key factor for exercise intensity prescription is tempo of the movement tempo of the movement is nothing but how long the person taking for concentric and isometric and eccentric phase of the movement for example person a performing eccentric phase for 1 second isometric phase for 0 second again concentric phase for 1 second person b performing 3 seconds eccentric phase 2 seconds isometric phase and 3 seconds concentric phase which is tougher obviously higher the tempo makes higher the intensity of the exercise higher the muscle work of the exercise lower the tempo lower the intensity and lower the muscle work of the exercise so modifying the tempo also helps to determine the progression and regressing the exercise intensity one thing i didn't talk about here is speed and velocity of the movement when it comes to force velocity curve concentric and eccentric phase there is a different in force development and velocity curve we can apply most of this things in the sport specific population probably i will upload separate video for the force velocity relationship how can we prescribe to the velocity based exercise training so i am mostly talking about the rehab and pain perspective so i'm not talking about that in this video hope you learn something new we come to end point of this video we are prescribing the exercise to the painful person so one bonus point also we have to keep that in mind stick with your objective what movement you are prescribing to the patient are they performing the same movement same muscle activation because human body is an excellent machine it tend to compensate without knowing ourselves so you have to keenly look out the compensation which is not come directly into the objective of the movement second point is pain always you have to ask the pain intensity if your movements causing more or the pain reduce the exercise intensity as i mentioned in the previous eight factor if the exercise is causing lesser the pain 
Don't forget to progress exercise intensity with the help of the same eight factor. And also keep that in mind, the person training experience, previous physical activity also plays huge role in selecting the exercise intensity. So it is not like only with the help of first factor and third factor we can prescribe the exercise intensity. All the eight factor mingles together when you prescribe in the moment. So keep in mind all the eight factor when you prescribe the exercise. Simple logical point, the patient can able to perform progressed excess intensity with the help of this 8 factor if the person can't able to perform regressed excess intensity with the help of this 8 factor hope you learned something new don't forget to comment and share this video to your friends happy learning see you in the next video bye